could AI ever be imagined in a far future to surpass human intelligence? Um, I can't imagine of any reason why artificial intelligence could not surpass human intelligence. Um, what would a world be like if AI surpassed human intelligence? We're talking about intelligence, and I've yet to see intelligence as necessarily a fundamentally bad thing. Um, most of the great advances and artworks and truly inspirational things that human, humans have done have been as a product of the application of intelligence. Um, I would like to think if we had an AI that surpassed human intelligence, that that AI would be able to help us address some of the enormous problems that we're globally facing currently. I would love to have the opportunity to sit down with a true AI that surpassed my intelligence and say, right, solutions to climate change. Let's put them on the table. Um, and I would hope that that could be what we could see for the future, that we could actually see that we have created something quite unique and quite beautiful that actually gives us a perspective on ourselves and that gives us the capacity to address the problems that we're blundering into currently. So it is true that the, in terms of processing a bit of information, the human brain is probably about four orders of magnitude better than our best silicon computers. Um, that said, it's not clear to me the human brain is the best optimized computing solution. It's very efficient at processing bits of info. It's maybe fundamentally more efficient than silicon solutions. Um, but you see, we're not yet tapping supercomputing properly. And if we can move into a supercomputing space, everything that we imagine about current computational capacity and power will change fundamentally. So I really don't feel that we're actually limited. It just means we've got to get a bit more serious about supercomputing solutions. So the question is, would AI be a threat to the survival of humanity? And there's, this is always a concern, and we, we always run back to images of Terminator movies and things like that. Um, it's one possible prediction of a future that we should definitely be wary of. But again, I, I want to come back to the point that we're talking about artificial intelligence. We're not talking about control. We're not talking about combat. We're not talking about warfare. We're talking about intelligence. And I often wonder what's the bigger threat to human survival? Would it be from something that surpassed human intelligence or would it be from humans ourselves? And the answer to that is not clear to me. Humans are not doing a particularly good job of ensuring the survival of our own species. It's not clear to me that a true intelligence that surpassed human intelligence would necessarily be worse at it in terms of or more damaging or more threatening to humans than humans ourselves are. I do think that people confuse these issues of intelligence and control, and I think the fear is a lack of control, that we will no longer be at the top something in terms of what we are doing. Um, I think people have always been afraid of progress. I, think I actually think that intelligence is scary to people. I think that people find smart people scary sometimes. But again, it's not, intelligence does not mean control. Oh, the paperclip analogy. The yeah. paperclip analogy is an informative one that people take very seriously. So what if we create an AI and it turned all of America into paperclips? Uh, what we're not talking about there is we're not talking about intelligence, we're talking about the motivational structure of the system. If we created a system of infinite capacity with an absolutely asinine motivational structure, so it's, it had no ethical parameters, no capacity for reflection, and one simple unitary goal, create, create paperclips, we would have a problem. But there the problem is not the intelligence, the problem is the underlying motivational architecture. With any autonomous element, there would be a lot of attention need to be paid to the motivational architecture. A lot of the problems that we have as humans is our own motivational architecture. We're simply not good at working as a cooperative group. We're just not good at it. Um, we would need to be thinking in terms of AI as to how we might address the problems of the motivation and the design of the motivation of the of the, of the artificial organism, or whatever you want to call it, as well as endowing it with intelligent capacity. Um, so designing a system, achieve this outcome at any cost, is not an intelligent way to design any system. And we would know that for any level of system, whether it be AI or not. Um, it's also, it's interesting how we use the word intelligence. You would argue that system by itself is not intelligent. Um, sure, it's, it's, it's very, very good at solving chess problems, 
and it's doing everything it can to solve chess problems. But in doing so, it is having no capacity for self-reflection, no capacity to look at the consequences of its actions other than a single unitary goal. And I think the message there is very simple. Um, it, 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 there is no point to building an AI with a single unitary goal. That goes back to the paperclip example. I would like to have a conversation with an AI about gravity and why we don't have a unified field theory when we really should have got round to solving that by now. That's the kind of thing I'd like to see, and, uh, to get a perspective from a different form of intelligence that isn't bound by um, working in four dimensions as to basically, right, so why haven't we got a unified field theory? What have we been missing up until this point? That's the kind of exciting far future question I'd like to have a conversation with an AI about. If we're imagining an AI that is, has a capacity for self-improvement and that rapidly improves its intelligence beyond our comprehension, then one answer to that is, well, it's beyond our comprehension. The question is, are we still even interacting with it? Is it still even interacting with us? The answer may be that it's beyond our comprehension and it's no longer even interacting with us. That may be one simple solution. If it's really if its intelligence, if its capacity so far transcends anything human, why would it have any interest in anything human?